Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now today I am outside as you guys can see and I have, well it's quite windy outside and I have mics up on mic so the audio should be all right but uh, I won't be able to have it on when I get under the car so yeah please excuse me for that but for now let's just get on to the video. So these are the things that I've just kind of ordered over a short while. So I ordered a two-ton trolley jack, a pair of three-ton um, jack stands, toolbox, some tools in it, um, a socket set, some gloves, an oil uh, like drain pan, whatever you call it, and a couple of small things in here, which is, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a great way to piss off my. Um, my postman. But anyway, these are the small little things I've ordered. Mallet, some sockets, and I've also got some Torx um, bits, and also some Allen bits, I think. Some extensions, pads for both the trolley jack and jack stands, and well, yeah, gloves are quite important. But also, we need parts. We need stuff to do um, today's video with, and those things are over here. This is just a towel when I get under the car. But basically I'm gonna do some general maintenance on my car. So, oil change, wiper blades, because my car got a new windshield and the old wiper blades are quite bad. Oil filter, obviously. Um, an oil filler cap, and also this little washer between the oil drain plug and the oil pan because it's actively leaking. And let me just put up a picture of what it usually looks like in front of my house. And we need to get rid of that. So I guess let's start off with some minor stuff, which are the wiper blades. It's the least of my problems, but it's something simple. Um, there's just one thing on my car. The wiper blades are hidden beside, behind like this plastic. So let me just show you how to do it. This, it goes for some Seats, not all, but some Seats had this like quirk where they would hide the wiper blades behind these like little plastic things. So let me just show you how to get them out. But basically putting the uh, wiper blades into service mode. So you turn on the ignition, then you turn it off. You can take out the key if you want, and you just press the lever down one as if it was to go, you know, uh, wipe the thing at least like once. So now they are going to stay like this until we tell them not to stay like this. So now you can actually, you know, take it back and do stuff to it. So what the way you take them off, there's this little clip here. Press it on both sides here. And then same thing on this side. Don't know if you can see it. Same thing. And you kind of slide them off a tiny bit. Maybe this is a two-handed job. Give me a sec. Yeah, it is quite a two-handed job, but basically pressing these two and it should slide off that way. So maybe I can, let me just take this off real quick. It takes, it takes a while, but it just kind of slides off this way. If you haven't changed it in a while, yeah, it does take, does take some time. Also, uh, there's a little diagram for anyone who kind of wants to know on the side of these windshield wipers. It's quite nice, quite neat. Um, this is metal, so you can snap off. If you really want to, you can snap off these. They are, um, they are plastic, so it probably could just literally slap, snap, whoops, snap off. So let me, let's install, let's install the new ones. Nice, right. And make sure when you do order these, uh, that they're the same size, uh, because on my car, it is the same size but in some cars where the windshield wipers aren't going this way, where they just go like one direction, it can be different sizes. So let's put these back into their places. This should be perfect. Yeah, I'll make them go up uh, later on. So now let's uh, jack up the car. Now you might be asking yourself, how would you jack up a car that where, that you want to put on jack stands, but it only has one jack point. Well, the thing is, right, you can use, in the front, you can use the steering rack subframe, 
which is what I'm gonna be putting this under. But my car steering rack subframe is too low for this. So I have to lift it at first with its normal um, jack and then I can put it under. Right, this should be enough. Uh, the jacking point can be found uh, via di diagrams. My car has them pointed out with these uh, little arrows pointing down. And now let's put this under, let's put this under the car. Also, this is gonna be the point where I take off this mic. So yeah, sorry. So this is an air piston jack. So let me just quickly lock the piston up. There we go. And now I can use my kind of hand to move it up just so that I can get an uh, place almost. So let's quickly do that. So uh, I don't know if you can make it out, but basically I'm gonna be putting it in between. Uh, I mean, just let me, let me just mark it out with um, two arrows here. But basically that's where it's gonna go up. And I think it's in perfect position to be for me to put it into place and there we go okay right I can't move it anymore with my hand so let me just shorten this I only need one and then let's start lifting uh, also make sure that the car is in gear if it's a manual or in P if it's an automatic and have to have the handbrake on if you're not on an even uh, if you if you're on even if you're on an even surface and if you're on an uneven surface um, make sure to get some bricks Oops. make sure to get some bricks um, so that you can put it like right behind or around the wheels and that's not gonna be, that's not gonna be needed until the end <laughs> You got it up in a place where you want it. Uh, pick a height for your jack stand and then put it up against here. And make sure that the jack stands are even height because, yeah, that can be a problem. Make sure that the handle is on the height. That's the way I do it. And, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Well, that's the way I do it. That's one side done. Let's go to the other side. Now here, I've already done the height, so let me just quickly go on the, um, lift it up on this side. Same place, just on the other side. It's basically symmetrical. Now, you'll notice that it will start to lift up on the other side. Um, yeah, so what you're gonna have to do is just come back on this side and, uh, well, lift it up again and put this in the right place because this is quite dangerous. Like, it's a tiny bit off. Yeah, I can kind of fit my finger up, like, underneath it. So, yeah, you're gonna have to jack it up on that side. All right, perfect. 
Now that that's done, there's one more thing I have to do. It's under the hood. So, the oil filler cap <laughs> is leaking, as you guys can see. Still leaking. The engine is still kind of warm, but um, that's fine. Uh, if you do, uh, if you are going to change it, the oil, make sure that, well, you've started the engine for about two to three minutes, just so that the oil will be a tiny bit um, warm. It'll just basically drain off faster. All looks quite nice in there, actually. I don't really see much wear, and it's not milky. Which is a really good thing. So let's look at the new, uh, new one. Which, if you look at the gasket, it actually somewhat sticks out. <laughs> Whereas this is like really under the edge. Yeah. So let's put this in. Very, very nice. Yeah, it feels a lot better. There we go. Nice. All right. Let's get down down to the bottom there. Uh, but first, we need to wear gloves because oil is quite quite poisonous. And it can go through your uh, skin, so always wear gloves if you're uh, dealing with oil. Perfect. Nice and comfortable. These gloves are pretty nice as well. They're like, I was supposed to get white ones, but for some reason I got blue ones. Anyways, the white ones are like three, four pounds uh, cheaper for some odd reason, but anyways. And one thing I'm hoping for is that this gasket is, that it's gonna fit, or it's gonna be small enough, because I think it's gonna be too big. Actually, let me just get my towel. And as I said, it's actively leaking, which is great. Fucking amazing, how warm is this? Okay, that's bearable, All right, that's perfect. How about this? This is the exhaust, it's fine, okay. All right, it's all good. Uh, so, let me go and undo that. Well, first, let me just try to compare the sizes, if I can. Yeah, I thought, I, it's way too big. It goes around the whole nut, actually. I thought so. Uh. So yeah, anyways, let's hope that it's gonna be all right for now. And I think the oil breather is also leaking in the back. So it might not be actually this. This might not be really needed. So yeah, let's do the oil. Now for the oil filter, right? Uh, you have to have this special wrench. You can buy several tools for this. Uh, there are several several different ones but I bought this like large this pliers or I don't know what you would call this but it's basically clamp onto it and then twist it until you can hand twist it out um, so let me just put this in there because I'm gonna need it and let me get this and also I need to make sure that I undo this because this would be, uh, would be pretty, pretty shitty. Right. Let's go. Actually, it might be the oil breather, which is what I'm afraid of. Oh, it's such a shitty job to do. Right, well, at least, at least it's not gonna be the drain plug. Um, constantly leaking, which is a relief. Let's see if this is good. Oh, this is nowhere near big enough. I'm gonna be so shit filming this. Uh, give me a sec. Is it good enough? Maybe one size smaller? It's a pretty snug fit. I think this is the winner. All right, 19 it is. But first let's, um, let's get the oil filter, which is, where is it? Where is it? Well, I found it. That's literally it. But I don't know if I can get up, get in there without, well, at least taking this plastic, this plastic off. So let me just get to it.
can you tell which side on which side there is oil leaking? <laughs> oh, this. Ew, this doesn't look very enticing. But I'm not gonna clean this because until I replace the oil breather, it's it's not gonna go away. Right, and I think now now I have now I think I have enough space to actually get to the oil filter. So give me a sec. So there's no space for me to get to there with this, but luckily. I can use this socket as well because it has a socket end as well, which is very, very handy. Now I'm just hoping that this one also has that thing at the top. Yes! Oh, thank God. Right, okay. This is very important. This is what I was talking about. such an awkward place, it's actually unbelievable. Now, when you do change your oil filter, you need to lubricate the seal. Because if you don't, it's gonna leak. So let's quickly do that. Let me just open this up. By the way, I'm using Castrol 5W40, and this is, um, this is spec for uh, VW50501. That's what my car takes. So let me just open this up real quick. And open it up here. What you need to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna be tilting I'm gonna be tilting this forward just so that I can dip my finger in this and then I'm gonna just easily just do this I need to make sure you need to make sure that you do it enough otherwise it will leak and you don't want that you really don't want that. You know what? Having oily hands doesn't help. And one more thing you need to make sure is that the actual the gasket comes out <laughs> with the filter because at times it can get stuck on that, stuck on there. So yeah, it's something you definitely need to make sure. And then you take your pan and put it straight under the actual thing. <laughs> and kind of push it a bit like more forward, not exactly underneath it, because it, the way it will flow out is it'll be like, like this, instead of just going out and then straight down. So mine is pointing that way, so I'm just gonna put it Put it a tiny bit more that way. Don't do it too tight, you don't want to uh, rip thread, but make it sure that it's decently tight though. Yeah. Perfect. Alright. And now, let's pour in the new oil. Oh, 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 oh,
And yes, it might be like two hours later, but we're done. And I don't know how much I can um, actually have like voice in like, you know, when I was changing the oil because my dad started teaching in like the room that was like, it, we were just right outside the room that he started teaching on. So yeah, I don't know how much I can actually put in because it's just literally music <laughs> from him that we can hear. But basically in a nutshell, I changed the oil filter. It was a bitch to get to. So yeah, and you actually, I don't actually need the clamp. There is a socket thing at the end, so you can use a socket wrench as well, which is very nice. That is very, very nice. Um, and then the oil came out perfectly, and then, oh, it sounds, it sounds better. Uh, the oil that was in it was 0W30, I think, and that was from a dealer. Uh, that wasn't me who changed it, but that was too viscous for the car. Um, and at cold starts it used to just take a lot and now it doesn't so it just shows uh, what different oils can do to an engine make sure that you put the right one in your car so yeah um, don't fuck that up also there are more diff there are like different spec 5 let's say 5W30, there are different specs for different cars. Make sure that you get the right spec of oil from 5W30 or 5W40. You know, make sure that you make sure you don't get it like a diesel per like a diesel engine purpose oil because yeah that could that could suck properly. Um, the wipers are amazing. Flawless. Uh, I'll link a video on how to reset the service computer on Seat, most Seats of around 2007, uh, so mid 2000s to 2010 ish. Um, and yeah, I think it was pretty successful. So yeah, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, click the like button. If you didn't dislike it, and tell me why. And consider subscribing. Um, and check my Discord server out. You know, there's some pretty cool people there. It's, it's quite fun. The link is in the description. So thank you all for watching and have a good one. Models popping bottles.